Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to test the validity of various sorites, which are just extended syllogisms. Um, they often are missing intermediate conclusions. And so we are going to, first of all, restructure in the proper standard form. We're gonna find the intermediate conclusions then we're gonna determine whether or not uh, the syllogisms are valid based on if the conclusion follows from those intermediates. And we'll also talk about how to use the rules to test for validity of sorites as well. So we're gonna start here with uh, number two. Um, no C are D, all A are B, some C are not B, some D are not A. So remember in standard form we need to move uh, um, the predicate term of the conclusion, the major term, wherever that occurs in the premise, that needs to be premise one. And then um, what we do is we find the shared term between premise one and the next premise, whatever it might be. So here it will be B. And then that will be premise two. And then you can see here we have C and B. C is shared with C in the first premise, so we'll actually move that down to the bottom. So essentially, that becomes this. Um, so again, the major term A goes, uh, we need to move the first premise that has A into the first slot. So B is shared here, so some C or not B becomes the second premise. And then um, C and C are shared here, no C or D. So notice we have two middle terms here, two Bs and two Cs. Okay, so now that we have it in the proper format, what we need to do is draw a Venn diagram for the first two premises and figure out uh, what that conclusion is. So our middle term here is B, our major term is C, um, and minor term A. Um, so, okay, so if we uh, use a Venn diagram, which I'm not gonna do here, for all A are B and some C are not B, then the logical conclusion that emerges from this are that some C are not A. Um, so if you, so right now do the Venn diagram for that and you will see that uh, the logical conclusion is that some C are not A. Now, uh, uh, so that's step one. Okay, so um, so then what we do, so we've, we've worked through the, the conclusion of the first two premises. We use the conclusion, the logical conclusion, the valid conclusion that we've drawn. We compare it to um, the third premise and we do another Venn diagram. So here we're gonna use some C or not A and then we will add no C or D, which is our third premise here. So we bring that up here and then we work through those two uh, premises to draw another conclusion. So the secondary conclusion that comes from that is the following. So now we use our intermediate conclusion and our final premise uh, and we create a Venn diagram and then we analyze that Venn diagram to determine if the conclusion some D are not A actually follows. Again, I'm not gonna include the Venn diagrams here, but if you do this Venn diagram, you will see that some D are not A does not follow um, logically in the Venn diagram. There is no X in the D circle that is outside of the A circle. In fact, there is no X in the D circle at all. There's no X in um, the A circle. So. This uh, logically uh, does not follow. This is an invalid uh, sorites, an invalid inferential uh, argument. Now, um, uh, if we look at the rules, so now we're gonna use the rules. So if you look at rule three, it says two negative premises are not allowed. Well, what do we have here? We have a negative E form statement and we have a negative O form statement. And so uh, by rule three, this uh, sorites fails uh, the, the test for validity. 
So we know we've now proven that this is an invalid um, uh, argument uh, based on both the Venn diagram method as well as the um, rules for validity. All right, I know that's a lot. These are complex. You've been working the entire semester up to this point, and that's why it is complex. Um, it's kind of everything coming together in this beautiful moment where you're displaying your knowledge. So let's move on to um, number three. Uh, now, remember, the, uh, the major term, the predicate of the conclusion, is we have to move the premise that has the major term to slot one, so all ERF is gonna be moved to slot one. We then look for the other F. The other F is right here, so this premise will remain where it is. And then we move to S. No SRM, this will move down below to three. And then we have another M here, some MRH will move to four. So I'll write that out now. Okay, so I have reformatted this uh, in the appropriate format. And now we need to use the first two premises to determine um, uh, the logical, logically valid intermediate conclusion. So if you have all ERF, all FRS, um, and again, I'm not going to do the Venn diagrams here, but the logically valid conclusion you can draw are all, that all ERS. Um, So now we use the third premise here and our intermediate conclusion to draw a second intermediate conclusion, intermediate conclusion subscript two. So if we have all ERS, no SRM, the logical secondary conclusion is that no MRE. <coughs> And again, I'm not gonna work these Venn diagrams, but please do to verify. And then finally, we need to see if some H or not E follows from no MRE, some MRH. So if we do, uh, if we take our intermediate conclusion two and our premise four, and we create that Venn diagram, we do in fact find an X that lies uh, within the H circle, but outside of the E circle, and thus this is a valid um, extended um, syllogism. Okay, but now we need to check it, right? Let's check it also with our rules. So the first rule is that um, each of the middle terms, however many there are, must be distributed at least once. So here our middle terms are F, S, and M. So F is distributed here in the A form statement, so that works. S is distributed here uh, in the E form premise three, and M is actually also distributed in E form premise three. Remember both subject and predicate are distributed in an E form statement. All right, so we pass rule one. If a term is distributed in the conclusion, it must be distributed in the premise where it occurs. Um, so E here in an O form statement, the predicate here is distributed. That means that E needs to be distributed where it occurs, which it, does, which it is. It's the subject of premise one, so it is distributed. Two negative premises are not allowed. We only have one negative premise. And um, if you have a negative premise, you must have a negative conclusion and vice versa. If you have a negative conclusion, you must have one and only one negative premise. And that's what we have here. O form is a negative and we have the E form here. Um, and if all the premises are universal, the conclusion cannot be particular, except from, you know, the Aristotelian standpoint, we won't really get into that. Um, but not all of the uh, premises are universal. There is a particular premise here, one and only one, and there is a particular conclusion. So we pass rule five. So this is, in fact, valid. All right, let's try one more and then we will uh, wrap it up. Number five. Uh, <clears throat> all BRC. 
no C or D, all E or A, all A or B, some E or not D. Again, we need the D term in the first premise, so we'll have to move this up, and then we'll um, figure out the structure, so I will do that now. Okay, so we can already see, um, if we just start with the rules, we have a particular conclusion, and we don't have a particular premise. We're only gonna evaluate this from the Boolean standpoint. So this is invalid from the Boolean standpoint. Uh, but uh, remember that there is a table in the book where you can um, examine which term um, uh, will make this valid from the Aristotelian viewpoint. And in the book, it tells you what page that table is on and you can examine it there. But what I, what I will do right now is um, demonstrate the intermediate uh, conclusions. Uh, I'm not gonna do uh, the Venn diagrams, but uh, I'll demonstrate the intermediate conclusions so that you can see those. Okay, so the intermediate conclusion <clears throat> from no CRD, all BRC, let me go down here. No CRD, all BRC is no BRD. So now we move the third premise over and we evaluate no BRD and all ARB. And if we do that, we get, <clears throat> if you draw the Venn diagram for this, um, no DRA. Okay, so now we have no DRA and we take our last premise, which is all ERA. If we have no DRA, all ERA, therefore some E are not D, um, this does not follow from the, from the Boolean perspective. Um, <clears throat> and we know that, right, like from the Boolean perspective, you have to have the X in the proper location. There's no way we could get an X from any of these premises because they're all universal. So our final Venn diagram is not going to have an X, right? It's not going to have an actually existing thing. However, as I mentioned, um, I know I said we weren't going to evaluate this from the Aristotelian perspective, but we, we can. So what you do is you take, um, what we do here is we take the final syllogism, which is no DRA, that's our second intermediate, intermediate conclusion. We take our final premise, all ERA, and then we add our final, final um, conclusion, some ER not D. Uh, and then we figure out the mood and figure of this. So this is a, an EAO figure two, because the middle term is stacked on the right, so an EAO two. And this is, um, in fact, a valid uh, form from the Aristotelian perspective. Again, it's invalid unconditionally from the Boolean perspective. But this is a valid form if the minor term um, is an actually existing thing. So in this case, we don't know what E is, but if E were E walks, <clears throat> then it would not, in fact, uh, be, uh, this would be an invalid form from the Aristotelian perspective. Although we could get into a, a discussion about whether or not E walks actually exist. They do exist uh, in the sense that they are creatures that have been created, they're in a movie, there's dolls of them, but they don't exist uh, as living, breathing things, at least as we know. <clears throat> but if E were ears or eggplants or emus, then um, this, in fact, would be uh, a valid, valid from the Aristotelian perspective because the critical term, the minor term, would be something that exists. Okay, so, all right. Whew. Everything that you've learned has led up to this moment. So I hope you can, if you understand this, you can take a step back and realize that you know how to evaluate um, not only categorical syllogisms, but now also extended categorical syllogisms called sorites. Um, 
or extended deductive arguments uh, using three circle Venn diagrams, which is a really difficult thing to do. You also know how to evaluate them using the rules method. Um, and you also now know the difference between uh, the Boolean and Aristotelian perspectives and how to determine whether or not uh, things are valid based on whether uh, the terms have existential import. So well done if you understand it. If you don't understand it, keep working at it um, and watch other videos about it. Think about it, reread, and attempt the problems, and you will learn it in the future.